Some game-changing features just dropped in the July release of Photoshop, and they're all about working faster and smarter. In this video, I share with you my top 5 favorite updates, including tools from both the general release and Photoshop beta that can instantly improve your workflow. First, let's look at two features available in the general release. My name is Jesus Ramirez, let's get started. One of the biggest updates in the July 2025 release of Photoshop is the Enhance Remove tool. It is now accessible from the contextual taskbar after making a selection. Let me show you how it works. I'll enable the Selection Brush tool from the toolbar. Then I'll loop around and release when I come back to where I started to select the man in the background. This magenta overlay is a selection. If you enable any other tool, you will see the marching ants. But when you're in the Selection Brush tool, you will see the magenta overlay. Also notice that I left part of a shoe unselected. The updated remove tool does a much better job at erasing objects without leaving behind strange artifacts, and it's less likely to hallucinate or generate a new object based on the remnants of your selected object. In previous versions of Photoshop, a person would have likely been generated based on the unselected shoe. All you need to do now is click on this new remove button from the contextual taskbar, and Photoshop removes the man from the background. The results are excellent. This new update to the remove tool uses a refresh Adobe Firefly model that produces higher quality generated fill content with improved blending, pattern matching, and background integration. Notice that Photoshop also auto creates new layers by default to help you protect your original image and work non-destructively. Let me now show you how to change some of the settings on this new tool. Go into the remove tool from the toolbar and on the options bar, you'll see all the new settings. The newest one is the Create New Layer checkbox. You can disable this so that you don't create a new layer every time you use the tool. I'll go ahead and do that. I'll make sure to keep sample all layers checked. Now, when I loop around an object, Photoshop will fill it in automatically and I have to press the Enter key to commit the changes. The generated content will appear in the currently active layer. You can also check the remove after each stroke checkbox so that I can loop around an object. And as soon as I release, Photoshop fills in the selection and removes it automatically. And I can do that one more time to remove the two remaining cones in this image. As you can see, the tool is much faster and it generates fantastic results. Photoshop now allows you to choose the model it uses to generate content. To show you how it works, we'll add some content to this photo. I'll start by enabling the selection brush tool, then making a selection around the street. Simply loop around the area you want to select. When you come back to where you started and release, Photoshop will close the loop and fill the inside. Next, click on Generator Fill and enter a prompt. I'll type Venetian Canal with Gondolas. The new feature in Photoshop is here, the Firefly icon. When you click on it, you can decide which model to use for your generation. Currently, you can decide between Firefly Image Model 1 or 3. We'll use version 3 for this first generation. Then I'll simply click on Generate. And in just a few moments, Photoshop will generate three variations. These are my results. I'll click on the right pointing arrow from the contextual taskbar to see them all. Now I can go into the Properties panel and choose version 1 from the dropdown, and I'll click on Generate again. Photoshop will now use Firefly Image Model 1 to come up with my generation. Having the flexibility to choose between models helps you find the one that performs best for your projects. Compare between the two and see what best fits your needs. Now let's look at the new features in Photoshop Beta starting with my favorite, the Harmonize button. This one's a game changer for compositing. It matches colors and lighting between layers automatically and the results are very impressive. Let me show you how it works. This is the image that we're gonna work with. I have a background image of a road and this photo of a car. The goal is to composite this car onto this road. So we'll start by selecting the car layer and then clicking on the remove background button. This will automatically remove the background. Photoshop does a fantastic job. And now there's a new button here in the taskbar called harmonize. All you need to do is click on that button and Photoshop will use generative AI to combine this foreground image to the background. And Photoshop does a fantastic job. It completely relights the car adds shadows, reflections, and everything else it needs to make it into a realistic composite. You have three variations. These are all generated images. It's using the same car, but Photoshop changes the lighting to better match the scene. 
All you have to do now is simply select the variation you like best or click on the generate button to generate three additional variations. And this technology doesn't just work with objects, it also works with people. In this case, we have a daytime photo of a desert and a very stylized photo shot in the dark. I've already masked out the background just to work a little faster. And once again, all I'm going to do is click on the harmonize button and you will see that Photoshop will change the lighting of the foreground image to match the background. And the results are really, really good. Look how much better the image looks. Can you imagine having to do this by hand before? It would have been next to impossible to change the lighting of the scene to match the background. Notice that Photoshop also added shadows to the coat to make it match the scene. This is without a doubt one of the best tools Photoshop has ever released for compositing and I'm very excited to see where it goes from here. And by the way, if you've learned something new, make sure to like and subscribe. In this example, we have the opposite. The background is a night scene while the foreground is a daytime photo of an elephant. Again, I'm simply going to click the harmonize button and Photoshop will use generative AI to composite the elephant to the background. Notice how fantastic the results are. Not only that we color match the foreground to the background, but we added shadows and reflections that fit the background perfectly. And I'll cycle through the variations to see which is the best result. In this case, I like the first variation the best. As you can see, this tool gives you fantastic results with just one click. But there's a catch. It still has the same 1024 by 1024 resolution used by Generator Fill. That means the result gets stretched across the entire canvas, not just over the composited areas, which will often cause blur and loss of detail. If you want to learn how to get better results and even trick Photoshop into producing a sharper output, check out my tutorial on mastering the harmonized feature. You'll find the link in the description. Now, Let's move on to Generative Upscale, a tool that increases image quality, clarity, and sharpness using Generative AI. Here's a document we'll work with. I'll press Ctrl R to enable the rulers. Notice that I'm working with an image that's 1000 pixels wide. This new feature allows us to upscale the image using Generative AI. To do so, you can go into Image and choose Generative Upscale. This new Generative Upscale window is very easy to use. First, select your creativity, low, medium, or high. You can think of it as to how stylized you want your results to be. In this first example, we'll leave it at low. Then choose your output scale, 2x, 3x, or 4x. In this case, I'll choose 4x, and I'll simply click on upscale. This will generate a new upscale document based on the original, and it opens it up in a new tab. This new document contains two layers. The original image that's been upscaled, notice that this is now 4,000 pixels wide, is no longer 1,000 pixels wide. And on top of that, we have the generative AI image at 4x. I'll tap on the Z key to enable the zoom tool and I'll zoom in so you can compare. This is the generated image and this is the original. As you can see, the generated image does give you more details. I'll double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. And again, you can compare the generated image with the original scaled up version. Let's do one more example. In this case, I'll use this portrait and we'll do the same thing. I'll go into image, but this time I'm just gonna go into image size. And from the image size window, you can see that you can also open the generative of scale by clicking on this link. And I'll use the same settings, low and 4X. And I'll click on upscale. Again, Photoshop will generate a new document based on my original. I'll press Ctrl R so that you can see that this is in fact 4,000 pixels wide. This is the original scaled up image and the generated version. I'll zoom in so that you can see the difference in detail. As you can see, the generated image is better, but so far with most of the portraits I've tested, the results feel very AI generated and not very realistic. But I'm hopeful that this technology will improve once it makes its way into the full release of Photoshop. And just to show you a different result, I'm going to go back into the image menu, go into generative upscale and increase the creativity to high and I'll click on upscale. Again, you can think of creativity as how stylized you want your image to be. And as you can see from the result, by having creativity all the way to high, the image looks more like an illustration rather than an actual photograph. So this is the original scaled up version. And this is a result with creativity set to high. Again, it doesn't look realistic. I think that the high setting works best when upscaling illustrations or when you want to apply a stylized effect to your photos. Let's now look at a new feature called projects. You can access it from the home screen. 
This panel allows you to keep all your related files in one place, like Photoshop documents, Illustrator documents, and Express designs. Think of it like a smart folder that lives inside of Photoshop. You can invite others, assign permissions, and work from the same set of files without digging through local folders or emailing different versions back and forth. No more local bottlenecks, version confusions, or manual uploads. Everything stays synced and structured inside of Photoshop. To create a project, just click on the Create Project button, and from this screen, give your project a name, and click on the blue Create button. Then you can invite collaborators, but I will skip this step for now. You can now click on the plus icon and create folders and bring in files from your Adobe Cloud Storage. Also, from the three-dot icon, you have options to share the project, rename it, leave it, or delete it. And if you made it this far, like and subscribe.